Hey everybody, this is the portrait of Sin Suk Ju from Korea. And it was painted by an artist in a larger group of artists called the Imperial Bureau of Painting. And that bureau, again, large group, and it was a group of artists in the government. So, you know, you could be tasked with a painting from the emperor all the way down, you know, to the lower status individuals within the government there. And typically if a Royal Bureau is painting this, it's a point of honor, you know, for the subject and really was suggesting in this case with Sin Sukju, his loyalty to the king, you know, he deserves respect uh, and it also honors his progress in the government too. He started off as a scholar and politician eventually rising to the status of prime minister in the middle of the 1400s. Uh, you know his rank and titles, uh, you know, where he stood within the government because of what he has on his robe, which is known as a rank badge. So that's embroidered silk on his robe. And it just indicates your status. Um, it could be a local kind of government politician all the way up to the emperor. So that's kind of one side of this is the more government association and what he did. The other thing is that, you know, for this area in, in Korea, this time period, it was very important to honor your ancestors and, you know, your elders, people who came before you. So ultimately where you would find this portrait would be in the family shrine and you know, when that person died, his, in this case, his spirit would remain among the living until it dissipated. But to honor him, to be in the presence of his spirit, uh, to show kind of where he achieved his success and that admiration with the rank badge was very important for the time in the family. So that's where it would be located. Uh, a couple other things. Since Ju in, in particular, he kind of worked directly with one of the princes in the, in the court. And he was very much a part of managing and working with the collection of Chinese paintings that one of the prince, princes in the court owned and collected. And so his work gives us an idea of China and Korea's interactions and their influences on each other through, you know, in the government and through really art and culture as well. So again, he's working with one of the princes in the court. Uh, I think ultimately that prince was executed. Um, and then Sin Suk Chu works with the emperor. So he's kind of he was so respected that even when a prince that he was working with was executed, the emperor still kept Sin Suk Ju in the court because he realized how valuable he was. The other thing to talk about this with context, and this is probably the last thing, is that there is some Western painting influence here. And you see it mostly in the face and I'll have a close up on the face in a little bit, just the, the detail there. And you can't see it here, but the wrinkles along his eyes, he's got some great crow's feet. Uh, it just shows some influence of Western painting with the sense of detailing and uh, you know, approach that we'll talk about from the Jesuits when they come into, you know, uh, Christian missionaries and whatnot in the 18th century or the 1700s. So let's take a look. It was very hard to find a picture where you could see a real good close up of his face. But one, this is a full length portrait. Two, you know, again, we already talked about it, that official robe with the badge of rank. So it has the peacocks, plants and, and clouds. And that particular imagery was associated with a certain status and a certain rank. So that's displaying his power. The other thing within his face, um, the belief is that your face reveals really the characteristics of the person. Because you notice everything else is very much hidden by these pretty flat based robes. 
So the thing that you want to focus on, of course, is the face. He's very solemn, you know, serious. Uh, he does have crow's feet coming out along his eyes. He's got the lines along his nose and mouth, you know, suggesting wisdom, dignity, um, you know, that serious devotion that he was known for. So that's, I think, um, probably what the most important thing is um, in terms of how you reveal his, his personality characteristics. The other thing here, you know, plain background. So again, you're focusing on the man and his robes, of course, dominate the rest of his body because you just see the face and then everything else is the robes. And it's pretty flat, except you just have the lines, thin lines to suggest the folds and drapery detail. And his feet are raised up on a little like stool or platform. And you see a little bit of the chair, um, but not much. Uh, it, it was common in this time period, if you're gonna do a full body portrait to tilt the head slightly to show one ear. Does that have any meaning? Probably not. Um, but it's just that characteristic way that they would um, showcase the human body during this time period. So I would say for function, definitely you know, portrait, but also I think that ritual and power, the ritual of having a portrait done of your ancestor, putting it in the family shrine, as a point of honor and respect. Uh, and then that in part is the power, the power of the elders, and also the fact that he has such a high ranking job and status within the you know, government. And you see that with his rank ba badge, it's you know, a focus on him, the dignity and, and age and wisdom that he displays. So I think it's definitely power as well. Uh, so I'm going to do for formal quality then pattern or even emphasis, and that both is associated with the rank badge on his chest. And again, that is emphasizing his status and power uh, within his within the kingdom at this time period. So that again is the portrait of Sin Sukju from Korea in uh, the 1400s.